Let's dive deeper into the action with our markets reporters. Abigail, what are you watching? You know, Caroline, I'm thinking about a cross asset class perspective relative to the trade deal. Let's check in on our chart that we've been looking at quite a bit over the uh, last few weeks. This is, of course, the second half of 2019, so the third quarter on July relatively flat for gold in yellow, Treasury uh, futures in white, so actual bonds, and then the NASDAQ and uh, the S&P 500 E-minis in blue and orange. Then the Fed meeting, we see a bit of a divergence here. Gold and Treasuries going sharply higher, those haven assets being bid up, stocks being bid down. Some of this, though, in August, also trade headlines uh, really uh, to bringing uh, investors out of risk assets in, into havens. A little bit of uh, a stalemate here in September. What I'd like to point out, October had started off on a very volatile down note for uh, stocks, but now in the possibility of this trade deal, this mini trade deal, waiting for the details, uh, Taylor, we see that stocks are basically even now over this time period and havens coming down. Gold, in fact, having its worst week since February. Treasury is the worst week uh, in about a month, and both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, the best week the last time I looked uh, since August. So a risk on week on this uh, trade deal, the mini trade deal that we'll know more about soon, Taylor. Well, Abigail, I'm sticking with that theme and continuing to look at the relative outperformance of the Sox to the S&P 500. Of course, we know the chip makers have been a big bellwether gauge of how the trade fight is unfolding. And you did still have some outperformance today. The Sox up 2.3% relative to the S&P 500's 1% gain. And as you can see, that's been the theme all year long. You're still getting the Sox returning about 30% uh, so far this year relative to the S&P 500's only about 10% gain or so in the last last year. It's been the big outperformer since that December bottom. And of course, that story does continue today. I want to take a look at a chart that I'm showing inside my terminal here at BTV Go because we've talked a lot about this, where you have the, the Sox hitting up a triple top against that key 1600 level. It hadn't proved to be pretty strong, but you did have the Sox hold up against its 50 day moving average. Today, of course, though, we are closing back up around that 1600 level. Level. So my eyes will be on whether that 1600 level can hold and that new resistance line perhaps becomes the next support line going forward. Renita. Thanks, Taylor. I'm taking a look at the commodities, one of them that's been most susceptible to trade talks. It's soybean futures. It's hit a three-month high today on news that the U.S. and China had reached a partial trade agreement. Now, China would agree to some agriculture concessions, while the U.S. would offer tariff relief. The gains also come after the U.S. Department of Agriculture on Thursday made its second biggest monthly reduction in the history of its World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimates Report, the WASDE report. This means U.S. soybean inventory may fall by half from the prior season when reserves soared as China provided, or they avoided, rather, American supply. Meanwhile, bitter cold temperatures and snow in areas in the U.S. and China border have all but ended crop growth and halted harvest in those regions. This could potentially curb supplies or reduce the quality of soy crops and corn and canola, also spring wheat crops as well. 